There are three main settings that we will use to define the scope of our mechanism design problem. The first is general setting, which imposes only the very minimal structure on the environment. This setting consists of the following elements. The first is the set of players, labeled from 1 to n, with the generic player denoted by i. We will further refer to the designer of the mechanism as player 0. Every player, except for the designer, is endowed with a privately known type. The profile of all players' types is distributed according to some joint distribution with cumulative distribution function f and a probability density function phi. Then we have a set of outcomes, x. And in the general setting, we do not impose any restrictions on what this set can be. It can be finite or continuous, single or multidimensional, convex or not, and so on. The player's preferences are described by utility functions that depend on the outcome and on types. In principle, we allow the utility of player i to depend not only on their own type, but also on types of other players. This captures the case when player i does not fully know their preferences, but relevant information may be dispersed across other players. Furthermore, we allow the principal to have preferences over outcomes. This is useful for capturing social costs and benefits of different decisions when they are not explicitly internalized by any single player. Finally, while we do not include the description of a mechanism, we can specify what the result of the mechanism will or should look like. In this case, we call it a social choice function, which, for any profile of types, selects an outcome. Just like in game theory, we assume that the environment just described is commonly known by all players and the designer. The second setting is the quasi-linear setting, which is used in most of the literature. The first two elements are the same as before. We have a set of players, each of which has some private type. Now, however, we impose additional structure on the set of outcomes. Namely, we assume that it consists of two elements. The first is the allocation k. You should perceive this as some real decision that must be made in this environment. The second element is a vector of transfers from all players. And this is the big addition in the quasi-linear setting. The easiest interpretation of transfers is to see them as monetary transfers or payments from the players to the mechanism. But any other kind of numerary good instead of money, or, more broadly, any other way to provide fine-grained incentives to players, would work just as well. The utility functions reflect the introduction of transfers to the setting via this linear term. That is, we assume that all players' utilities are linear in transfers with a marginal utility of 1. This assumption makes it more difficult to interpret transfers as monetary transfers. Since marginal utility of money depends on factors such as risk aversion, wealth effects, and many others. Finally, a social choice function must, as before, select an outcome given any type profile. In this setting, this means selecting an allocation according to some allocation rule and a vector of transfers according to some transfer rule. The third setting is specific to my presentation of mechanism design. It is a special version of the quasi-linear setting, which imposes more structure on all aspects of the setting, but still nests many relevant problems. I call it the Euclidean setting. The Euclidean setting imposes three main assumptions on top of the quasi-linear setting. The first is that the set of types for every player is a convex subset of the real line. It is also implied that the marginal distribution of type of player i has full support on this interval. The second assumption is that the allocation can be represented as a real number for every player. Finally, we assume that every player's utility before transfers is given by the product of these two numbers, namely player's type and the allocation they get. This setting nests problems such as item allocation or public choice. In these problems, 
Layers type theta i represents their valuation for the item or the project, respectively, while the allocation k represents the probability of obtaining an item or the probability of the public project being implemented, respectively. And these are the three settings which we will most commonly use when talking about mechanism design.